Okay, we are back to the block on a movable wedge. So I've already done this problem once, and I used a momentum principle and work energy to find the speed of a block. So the, here's the situation. There's a, there's a wedge and a block, and they both have mass, and you start the block up here at the top, it slides down, but the wedge can also slide this way, and there's no friction. And so I, I found the final speed of the two things, saying momentum's conserved and energy conserved. It wasn't too bad, and I'll link the video down below here. But I want to redo the problem now with uh, Lagrangian mechanics. So just a quick review, we can calculate the Lagrangian as the kinetic energy minus potential energy, and the world path is going to be that of least action, where the action is the integral of L over uh, some time interval. And the solution to those kind of problems uh, use the Euler-Lagrange equation, which says that the partial of L with respect to one of the variables Q and minus the derivative with respect to T of the partial of L with respect to the velocity Q dot is equal to zero. So we're going to set this up. We're going to calculate the kinetic energy. We're going to calculate the potential. And we're going to do this two variables. OK. So let's first, uh, we, we have to think about how many degrees of freedom do we have here? Uh, you know what? How many variables would I need to completely describe the situation that we have? Uh, and the answer is two, right? And and it can be any variables that I want. I don't need the x and y coordinate of this. I just need one value, right? I could say, well, maybe it's a distance s down the plane. Well, but the plane can move too. The wedge can move. So I need this. I'll call this one x. And I, I could call that x1 and x2 or whatever, but I'm just going to call this the position of the wedge is x, and the distance the block goes down the wedge as s. So if you know those two values, you could reproduce the whole situation. Um, of course, this is not an independent variable, right? Because it depends on the position of the block. So that's fine. So now let's go ahead and write down the kinetic energy. I'm going to start with mass 2. So T2 is going to be 1 half M2 times its x velocity, which is just going to be x dot squared. And it's not moving in the y direction, so that's fine. Now for this one, I don't have the simple of a situation. What I really need to do is get the x and y coordinate of this. So let's say x1 is going to be x, right? It's going to be this position plus this position. So this is the uh, adjacent side of the triangle, and that's s. So it's going to be x plus s cosine theta. S cosine theta is this piece right here, and S is a variable. Okay, and then I can say y1. I can now here it doesn't really matter as much. I can call this y equals zero. So I'm just going to say y1 is going to be negative S. It's going to be this distance sine theta. And I put negative because I do matter. It does matter that uh, the y value has a negative number. S is not negative. S is positive. But I need to have a negative value. Okay, So I'm going to have that negative sign right there. Now I want to calculate the kinetic energy. So T1 is going to be 1 half M1 x1 dot squared plus y1 dot squared. I want to get that in terms of S though. So let's take the derivative of x1 and the derivative of x2. So x1 dot is going to be the derivative of x, which is going to be x dot, plus s dot cosine theta. Theta is a constant, so this term is just a constant. y1 dot is going to be just the derivative of this, negative s dot sine theta. So now I can put that in over here, and I get t1 is 1 half m1 x1 dot squared. I'm going to go ahead and write this out. So it's going to be x dot squared plus 2x dot s dot cosine theta plus s dot squared cosine squared theta. Oops. No, no parentheses there. That's my x dot squared. And then y dot squared is just going to be plus, I have a negative. I'm squaring that, so I get the negative goes away. s dot squared sine squared theta. OK, so right here I have s dot squared cosine theta plus s dot squared sine squared theta, I can factor out the cosine squared plus sine squared. So this is s dot squared times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, and this whole piece. And that's just 1. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So now I get, this is right, the whole kinetic energy term. T is 1 half m2 
I shouldn't, x dot squared plus, I'm going to multiply this all out, 1 half m1 x dot squared plus, I have 1 half times 2, so I get m1 x dot s dot cosine theta, and then I have, oh, this is just s. So then plus 1 half m1 s dot squared. Now here I have two x dot terms, so I'm going to combine those together. So I have 1 half m1 plus m2 x dot squared plus m1 x dot s dot cosine theta plus 1 half m1 s dot squared. Okay, now I need the potential. That one's not so hard. Uh, the block doesn't move in the vertical direction, so it has, we will say it has zero potential. And then I can say u is just going to be m1 g y1. So u is going to be negative m1 g s sine theta. So now I can calculate my Lagrangian. It's t minus u. So it's going to be all this plus that. So I'm going to rewrite that just for completeness. So let's say L is 1 half M1 plus M2 X dot squared plus M1 X dot S dot cosine theta plus 1 half M1 S dot squared minus a negative is going to be plus M1 G S sine theta. Okay, I'm done with that. Okay, so now I can take the partial, I want to do, I have to do this twice, right? I have two variables, so I have two Lagrangians, uh, two Euler Lagrange equations. Let's do the first one with respect to x. So I have the partial of L with respect to x minus the derivative with respect to t of the partial of L with respect to x dot equals zero. So let's start with the partial of L with respect to x. Well, I go through here, and there's no x's. So this is 0. Now I can take the partial with respect to x dot. The partial of L with respect to x dot is going to be, OK, here I have 1, right? So that's going to be bring the 2 down. I have 2 times 1 half is 1. So I get m1 plus m2, that's a 2, times x dot. Now over here, I have uh, an x dot. So I get the derivative, the partial of this respect to x dot is just going to be, that one goes away. So I get plus m1 s dot cosine theta, and there's no other x dots. So if you look up here, since this term is 0, then the derivative of this uh, is 0. So that means that the, this whole thing is some constant. So let's call that some constant c. So x dot plus s dot cosine theta equals c. And you'll notice this is actually, this is the velocity of the wedge. This is the velocity of the x velocity. This is actually the x velocity of the block. And is this conservation of momentum? It would be that if m1 plus m2 was not there. Is this just m2? Oh, and then there's a constant, right? So this is not zero, it's some constant. So, but this is conservation momentum. We get that from here. Okay, now let's do uh, the same thing for the uh, s variable. So I'm going to start off with the partial of L with respect to s. So the only place the s shows up in here is right here. So this is going to be uh, m1g sine theta. Okay, now I need to do the partial of L with respect to S dot. Okay, so let's just go through here. S dot right there. So the partial of this with respect to S dot is just going to be M1 X dot cosine theta. And here's another one. I, get, I bring the 2 down. So I get 2 times 1 half is 1. So I get plus M1 S dot. And that's it. Now I need to take the derivative of this with respect to time. So the derivative with respect to time of the partial of L with respect to S dot. Okay, right here, that's pretty easy. I just get M1 X double dot 
cosine theta. Remember, theta is a constant, so when I take the derivative of that, it doesn't really matter, and mass is a constant. And this is EC2 plus M1 S double dot. So since this is a partial of L with respect to S, and the derivative of the partial of L with respect to S dot, subtract these two and you get zero, that means that this has to be equal to that. So I get M1 G sine theta equals M1 x double dot cosine theta plus m1 s double dot. Okay, I need to get an expression. So here I have an expression for uh, in terms of x double dot and s double dot. But I want just one of them. Let's say x double dot. Okay, so up here I can solve this for s dot. So let's say uh, m1 s dot cosine theta equals c minus m1 plus m2 x dot. Uh, and then I can divide everything by here and I take the derivative. I'm going to do this in one step. So s double dot is going to be equal to, the, when I take the derivative, that c term goes away. So I get negative m1 plus m2 x double dot. But then I had divided by this m1 cosine theta m1 cosine theta. I feel like I'm, I think I'm on the right track. I feel, I feel like I did something, to see. I feel like something's missing. S, that's the x equation. Okay, I might have made a mistake, and if I did, I'm gonna post this anyway, because what the heck, right? It's still useful. Okay, so now I can plug this in down here, and I get m1 g sine theta equals m1 x double dot cosine theta plus m1 times all that stuff, which is going to be negative m1 plus m2 x double dot over m1 cosine theta. Okay, let's multiply, these masses cancel. Let's multiply everything by cosine theta, and I get, I'm gonna start a new sheet of paper. You know, that's the one thing I see students doing. Like, I, I wanna fit it all in here. Don't cram it in there if it doesn't work. Don't, don't force it. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by cosine theta to get rid of this term, and I get M1G sine theta cosine theta equals m1 x double dot cosine squared theta uh, minus m1 plus m2 x double dot. Now I can factor out the x double dot and I get m1 g sine theta cosine theta equals x double dot times m1 cosine squared theta minus m1 plus m2. And then I can solve for x double dot. x double dot is going to be equal to m1 g sine theta cosine theta all of that over m1 cosine squared theta and then I'm going to say minus m1 minus m2 right because that's that right there. And that's it. Okay, uh, and then I can go back and find S double dot right here, and I'm just gonna write that uh, S double dot is negative M1 plus M2 over M1 cosine theta X double dot. Okay, I think I think let's, that's good. Let's check some stuff here. So check number one, does this have the correct units? So here I have, I want this in terms of acceleration. So g is units of acceleration, and then I have no unit for sine and cosine. Down below I have mass, and I have mass, so the mass cancels, so yes, that does. Over here, again, I have mass over mass times acceleration, so we're good. Units check, check. Uh, what about this? What if, if m2 is giant? If m2 is giant, then what happens to the acceleration? Well, over here, if m2 is giant compared to m1, this is a really big term, right? Negative term. And so x double dot should be zero. Over here, 
if um, m2 is huge. Okay, you'd have to simplify. I think if you simplify, then you should get uh, s double dot in the case of m2 much greater than m1, then s double dot should be g sine theta. Yeah. And so you can check that. I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, now, the last thing is, does this agree with the, what, if, what about the final velocities, right? So here is my, my wedge. And let's say this is a height h, and this is a mass right there, and that's my angle. Uh, how fast would it be going down here? One thing you notice is that the accelerations are constant. Okay, so if the acceleration is constant, I can find the uh, final velocity down here. I'll call this uh, v1 final, and I can find v2 final, right, using these accelerations. And I'm not going to do it, okay, because I'm already getting uh, tired of this video, and my phone's going to die, and that's not good. Uh, but I did this video before, and you can check. It would be a great homework. Let me tell you, uh, v, I found v2 uh was i think the same numbers is the square is uh yeah the square root of 2 m1 g h over m2 squared over m1 plus m2 and and so this used work energy and momentum to find that and this uses h and instead of theta so you can convert this and see what you'd get uh, and then you can do the same thing over for uh, v1 would be equal to m2 over m1 v2 uh, and you can check and see if you get the same thing but that would be a nice little homework for you and i hope i didn't make a sign error in this video but there's a chance that i did okay but i still think the the solution's uh, fairly solid and useful and i hope you enjoyed it